Good morning. Happy Resurrection Day. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We're so glad that you're joining us on this Resurrection Sunday of Sunrise Baptist Church with our live stream. It is a day of celebration. It is a day to rejoice. The tomb is empty. The king is alive. And we're going to celebrate this morning. So let's join together and lift our voices. We encourage you to sing along wherever you are and uh, enjoy the worship this morning. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high, Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Again, our glorious King, Alleluia. Where, O oh, death, is now thy sting, Alleluia. Dying once, he all doth save, Alleluia. Where thy victory, O oh, great. is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ hath opened has led Alleluia Following our exalted head Alleluia Made like Him, like Him we rise Alleluia Ours the cross, the grave, the skies Amen. Are you celebrating this morning? I woke up with a smile on my face and just remembering that Jesus Christ had paid the price for my sin and then had conquered sin and death and made a way for me to participate in new life with him. We celebrate that this morning. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He is risen. He is risen. And he lives forevermore. The resurrection of our Lord. One more time. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. He is risen, He is risen, and He lives forevermore. He is risen, He is risen, 
Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Amen. Hope that you and your family are spending time celebrating this morning together. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's an event that changed history. It's an event that's changed my life. Up from the grave he arose. I love this song. Low in the grave he lay. Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to he arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Grave, he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah. His prey, Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus, my Lord. Hallelujah! Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever. The saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Lord, we just pause to give you thanks and to remember all that you've done for us. The resurrection that proves who you, who you are, who you said you are. You are the Son of God. You are Jesus, the Messiah. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And you are alive and seated at the right hand of God. And you've indwelled us with your very spirit so that we could have access to new life with you, access to all the blessings that you have to pour out. And we just thank you for those blessings right now. We remember how you've been watching over us, how you've been pouring out peace and joy and hope and providing for our needs. God, we, we thank you for that. And we continue to lift up what's going on in the world around us right now and pray, Lord, that you would be victorious over sickness and over death. You would bring comfort to families that are going through hard times, but that on this resurrection day, that they would look to you and find hope, find hope in Jesus Christ. And that we as the church would be able to communicate that hope to the people around us. Help us to be the light that shines in the darkness. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace, that you loved the world so much that you came to die for us, so that for anyone who believes in you, we would not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, we praise you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. 
who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You laid down your life That I could be set free Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory. Who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me And worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. And worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy. Worthy of this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. All that you've done for me. Worthy. Sometimes the world needs proof, right? I know people who've confronted me or I've been in discussion with them and they, they ask me, well, how do you know that this Bible stuff is true? How do you know that Jesus really rose from the dead? How do you know that he's alive? And hopefully the proof is in me. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. My life is the living testimony. Ask me how I know he lives. It's because he lives within my heart. He's changed me. I am no longer the same. I am different. Not just one time back when I prayed a prayer, but I am different every day. I am a new creation. I am transformed into the image of Christ. And I pray that people see that in me every day because that is the evidence. That is my testimony. That is the proof that Jesus Christ is who he said he was. He's in me and he's transformed me. And I serve that risen Savior. I, I pray that you do as well. Let's just glorify him, lift his name on high this morning. 
and uh, live out that light that Jesus has put in us. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Come on. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to sent his son they called him jesus he came to love heal and forgive he bled and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know. is worth a living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face tomorrow 
because he lives all fear is gone because I know and celebration of our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. This morning, we're going to continue on with Pastor Dan's message, so just give us just a minute. We're going to get things changed over here, and then Pastor Dan has a great Resurrection Day message for us. see you on resurrection morning. What an exciting day. Jesus rose from the grave. What, what an exciting day. Happy Easter, everybody, and what a wonderful time of worship we just had. Over the past four weeks, we've been in a series called Against All Odds, and this series is based on this monumental chapter in the Old Testament, and it's Isaiah chapter 53 incredible book, and chapter 53 is an incredible chapter. The prophet Isaiah recorded over 700 predictions, or over 700 years ago, recorded over 24 predictions uh, before Jesus was born, over before 700 years even got here. And so it's just a wonderful proof that Jesus was, as Pastor Kevin said, who he said he was. So we're going to look at this uh, first video as we have been uh, this week, um, introducing our message today. Oh. We're going to see if this works. If not, it's okay. Okay, sorry. All right. The wonders of technology. It works great when it works. So we're going to go on and we're going to start with a prayer. And then we're going to look at what Isaiah said about Jesus and find out some really cool stuff. So let's pray together. Father, as we gather here today, we pray that you would just, uh, as you're with us, that you would teach us, help us to experience the joy of our salvation. Help us experience the joy of the resurrection. Help us experience the joy of knowing that our hearts are united together. And even though we're separated and the church is empty, the tomb is empty, but the church is gathered together in heart and unity, one mind and one spirit. We thank you for that, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that pulls us together. And today during this message, I pray that you would just 
allow us to draw close to you, feel your presence, and glorify you for the resurrection. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're going to see that the Messiah, Isaiah said, was going to be despised and betrayed and rejected. He would be silent when facing his accusers. He would bear our sorrows and sins. And by that, he would heal our sicknesses, our sin sickness, pay for the price of our wrongdoings. Isaiah predicted that he would be successful and that he would rise from the dead. 24 predictions in all, and every single one of those absolutely came true. Now, the reason we're calling this series Against All Odds is because several years ago, a mathematician named Dr. Peter Stoner did some work with probability theory. And I introduced this in our first lesson in this series, and he worked out the math for just one person fulfilling eight prophecies 700 years before it was given. And so Dr. Stoner said the chance that any man might have lived down to the present time and fulfilled eight prophecies is one in 10 to the 17. That's one with the 17 zeros behind it. It's called 100 quintillion. That's the number. Now, what are the odds that Jesus would have fulfilled 48 prophecies? Well, we do, it's so big, we don't even have a number for it. However, Jesus just didn't fulfill 24 prophecies. He didn't fulfill 48 prophecies. Watch this. In Jesus' 33 years on the earth, he fulfilled 332 prophecies throughout the scripture, which is incredible. Now, what are the odds? The odds of that are impossible. That's why Jesus is who he said he was. Now, if you've downloaded the sermon notes off the, off the file, you'll see 48 of those prophecies, of uh, what they are and where they're found uh, in your sermon notes. With today being Easter, um, we're not going to talk about all 48 of those. We're just going to talk about the great prophecy that Jesus was going to rise from the dead. Now, what are the odds that a, a person could come back from being dead? Well... People say it's been done a few times. Most of them involve an emergency room or an operating table or being trapped under icy water and being revived afterwards. It's happened, but not often. Now watch this. That is being revived. Jesus wasn't revived. He was resurrected. Now what's the difference? Well, I'll tell you what the difference is. Is that when Jesus was on the cross... We are going to go to this next one here. He was crucified. He was pronounced dead by a professional Roman executioner. He had a, a, a thrust of spear through his side. The disciples watched the water gush out through the open wound, showing that his heart sack had burst. His body was pried from the nails that held it to the cross. He was wrapped in what they say was about 200 pounds of spices. This is why... Uh, burial is so expensive, including his face, his nose, his mouth. He was put behind a 2,000-pound stone. Okay? Now, what would be the odds of Jesus uh, just reviving from that if he wasn't resurrected from that? Well, what are the odds that he could revive himself, move the stone, walk 14 miles that afternoon, convince his friends that he was completely restored to health? The odds are... Zero, 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 zero. It's impossible. That's why this was a miracle. This, this was a, a great resurrection. And we make a big deal out of Easter, out of the resurrection day, because it is a big deal. Jesus came back to life, proving the power of God, that Jesus was who he said he was, and that there really is life after death. Now, Let's look at Isaiah 53.10. Then I'm going to break this down for just a minute, okay? <clears throat> Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And when his soul is made a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hands. Now, let's break this down a minute. So let's just take each section of this verse, and let's see where it applies, okay? So first of all, but it was the Lord's good plan to bruise him and fill him with grief. That is Good Friday. All right? However, when his soul has been made an offering for sin, 
That happened on the crucifixion. Then he shall have a multitude of children, many heirs. That's us. He shall live again. That's the resurrection. And then verse 11. When he sees all that is accomplished by the anguish of his soul, he shall be satisfied because of what he has experienced. My righteous servant shall make many be counted righteous before God, for he shall bear all their sins. It is absolutely incredible what Jesus Christ has done. Now, what are the odds that that could happen? What are the odds that it did happen? Well, let's walk through the, uh, the lesson today. And let me say this. This is really cool. Because let me show you what God did. In the Old Testament, in Isaiah, God lays out the plan of the way that he's going to work in the New Testament. And the means of its power, and that's the resurrection. So did you see how God laid out in the Old Testament how Jesus was going to come and be bruised? Uh, Good Friday, he was going to be crucified. He was going to gather a group of people. That's, that's us. That's the church. He was going to forgive their sins, which he did. He forgave the sins of the world. And he's going to resurrect him. In the Old Testament, God lays out the plan for the New Testament. It's right there in Isaiah chapter 53. What a wonderful God we serve. Now, when we look at the scriptures that talk about these wonderful prophecies, we're going to kind of walk through today um, like we did Good Friday. On Good Friday, we kind of walked through that night. Um, last week, we walked through the, the week before the resurrection. And today, we're going to walk through the day of the resurrection. So we're going to see what happened today. We're going to kind of be detectives and see what happened and, and see what the scriptures have for us. Now, all of the gospel writers record this. And in Luke, the Bible says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came to the tomb. Bringing the spices they had prepared, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Now, Christians gather on Sunday, and we worship on Sunday, because that's the day that Jesus resurrected. So we honor every Sunday uh, when we come to church, we honor the resurrection of the Lord. Now, we're going to read some lengthy passages of Scripture here, and, and the Bible says that God's Word is, is power. So we're going to read some Scripture which uh, tells the Easter story. Maybe some of you are, are joining in for the first time and maybe you're seeking, looking, and you're wondering what's this Easter thing all about. Well, I, I don't want to tell you. I want to let the Bible tell you what it's about. So that's what we're going to do today. So they went in, but did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men stood by them in dazzling clothes. So the women were terrified and they bowed down to the ground. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Asked the men. He's not here. He has risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, It's necessary that the Son of Man be betrayed into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and rise on the third day. And they remembered his words. What an incredible happening. Well, what happened right after that? So the women returning from the tomb, they reported these things to the eleven, to all the rest. And Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them were telling the apostles these things. But these words seemed like nonsense to them, and they did not believe the women. Now Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb, and when he stooped to look in, he saw only the linen cloths, so he went away amazed at what had happened. All right. So now we, we have the first part of the very earliest morning of this morning, over 2,020 years ago, of what actually happened on Resurrection Sunday. So what do we know right now? Well, first of all, just before dawn, three women went to, three or four women went to the tomb and to finish dressing the body of Jesus. Now, it was probably... Probably about four women because some uh, authors in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they'll add who else was there. So probably up to, up to four women. Now, this would be the opposite of what you would expect 
If someone's fabricating a lie, trying to lie that Jesus rose from the dead, and I'll tell you why. Because women weren't even allowed to testify in court. So if you were trying to make this up, you wouldn't have the witnesses be someone who couldn't even testify in court. You would have them as the men if you were making up this lie. And so this shows that this is the story. This is how it happened. These women went, they came back, told the uh, apostles, and, and then they just said, I, I just didn't believe it. And it's just not possible because we saw him die. Now, the second thing we know is that while on the way there, there was an earthquake. We talked about this on a Good Friday service. Um, the, the earthquakes are not common in, in Jerusalem. Uh, but they remembered this one. I mean, the, the skies grew dark. The earth shook. In fact, it split a crack in the ground that you can still see today over in Jerusalem. It is incredible. So we know that there was an earthquake. The earth, the sky, creation recognized that its father had died. This was a big deal. And nature recognized and sorrowed for the death of its creator. Because Jesus is the word. And everything comes by the creation and the spoken word. And so even nature recognized that this death of Jesus Christ was a big deal. Well, what else happened? Number three, if you're taking notes, angels announced that Jesus had risen. What an exciting point. It scared the women to death, but... Matthew uh, says that one of the angels' clothes was, was as white. He appeared like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. And this just this glowing, blazing angel of the Lord sharing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It might have been the same angel that scared the shepherds when uh, they announced the, the birth of, of Christ. This angel comes back and, and, and announces the resurrection of Christ. So what do they do? Well, number four, the women went and reported the news to the disciples. Now, on the way, okay, on the way to the report, they encountered Jesus in the flesh and, and didn't really recognize it and, and all of this. And, and so they went, number six, and they went and told the disciples and the disciples didn't believe their report. And I'm going to ask us a question. Would, would you, would I have believed their report? Now, here's what they're thinking. It's what we said a moment ago, okay? Um, we'll get to that in just a second. They said, look, we saw him die. We saw him be crucified. He was pronounced dead by an executioner. He had the spear thrust through his side. We saw the water flowing out. His body was pierced. He was wrapped in all of those spices and... Put behind a 2,000 pound stone. Mary. Jesus didn't revive. It, you're hallucinating. It, it didn't happen. That's, that's what they're thinking. That's probably what they were saying. However, it intrigued Peter and John enough. Where the, In Luke it talks about Peter. Where Peter and John investigated the tomb for themselves. Now. The Bible tells us that they, they go to the tomb. They look in. And they see the napkin, the face cloth, folded by itself, separated from the other linens. Okay? The Bible says that John saw the napkin and believed. Now, what's important about that? Because tradition says that every rabbi had a particular way they folded a napkin. Just what they did. And so it was like their signature, and, and that was what they did as a rabbi. And John looked in and saw this napkin folded in exactly the way that Jesus would fold it, in only his signature way. And John said, there's nobody else that knows how to fold it that way. Jesus is alive. John looked, saw the napkin, and said, I do believe. It's an incredible, incredible story. And so they go and they in investigate the tomb for themselves. And that's what happened on Easter Sunday morning. 
this very morning, 2,020 years ago, everybody right now is kind of wigging out, trying to figure out what is really true, wondering how they could find out if it's true, because now these rumors are starting to spread. Imagine staggering around all day trying to process this information. How do you get your head around this? But there's more. Luke also tells us that on this afternoon, and I'm going to read kind of a lengthy passage, but it's important for, for us to hear the word. So as we look at the scripture, now that same day, two of them were on their way to a village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And together they were discussing everything that had taken place. And while they were discussing and arguing, (laughs) Jesus himself came near and began to walk along with them. But they were prevented from recognizing him. Then he asked them, what is this dispute that you're having with each other as you're walking here? And they stopped walking and they looked discouraged. And the one named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have happened here in these days? This is big news. You're telling me you you haven't heard about this. What things? Jesus asked them. And so they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, powerful in action and, and speech before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death. And they crucified him. Oh, we were hoping that he truly was the one who was about to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it's the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some women from our group astounded us. They arrived early at the tomb. When they didn't find his body, they came and reported that they'd seen a vision of angels that said he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they didn't see him. And he said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Wasn't it necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them the things concerning himself In all the scriptures. And they came near the village where they were going. And he gave the impression that he was going a little farther. But they urged him, stay with us. It's it's almost evening. And now the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it uh, it was as he reclined at the table with them that he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him but then he disappeared from their sight. And they said to each other, were in our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road and explaining the scriptures to us? And that very hour they got up and they returned back to Jerusalem. What an incredible story. So, what happened when they went? They found the 11 and those with them that were gathered together who said, the Lord has truly been risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they began to describe what had happened on the road and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. So what has happened so far? Well, we looked at the first seven things. Now, number eight, Jesus has revealed himself to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Okay. Now, Luke continues with them back in Jerusalem. Okay, so this is what happens. As they were saying these things, he himself, Jesus, stood in their midst and he said to them, peace be to you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. (laughs) Why are you troubled? He asked him. Why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands, my feet. That is, I myself Go ahead, come on, touch me and see. Because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And having said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they were still amazed and in disbelief because of their joy, he asked them, okay, do you have anything to eat? 
So they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. He was going to show them you couldn't see it going down. He wasn't a ghost. He had a body, but it was a renewed body like we're going to have. So what's the ninth thing that we find out that happened on Easter Sunday morning? And that is, oh, excuse me. Um, There we go. Jesus came to the disciples in the evening, probably in Bethany, not far. It's just a couple of miles there from Jerusalem. He came to them. He shared these things that we have just read. And then what does he do? (laughs) He walked through the wall. He just appears. He comes in and he appears to them. Now, can you imagine maybe Jesus' sense of humor when he might have said, Hey, guys, I just thought I'd drop in and see how things are going. Can you imagine their face? Can you imagine what, what astonishment they felt when Jesus just appeared? And he said, Peace be to you. I couldn't imagine that. It, it was incredible. Now, once inside, Jesus showed him his wounds, his hands, and his feet. It really is me, he said, so that they would believe. Now, notice that Jesus' wounds are still with him in his resurrected body. This cross ordeal, this resurrection, this crucifying changed Jesus forever. He carries in his resurrected body the scars of what it took to Pay for and forgive the sins of the world. Sometimes I ask people a trick question. I'll say, do you think there's anything in heaven that's made by man? Of course, the answer is no. And I'll say, I think think there is. The scars in the hands and feet of Jesus will forever show us and forever we will be grateful as he has those scars Forever and ever, 10,000 years and, and it's just begun, we will see those scars and be eternally grateful for the sacrifice that Jesus made and the resurrection that happened on Easter Sunday morning. The first week that Jesus showed up to the disciples, it was only to 10 disciples because Judas had left and Thomas lost his faith. He wouldn't, he wouldn't come back. And so there's only 10. So the second time that Jesus comes, Thomas is there. And there's a whole story about Thomas I've talked about before. But it's just a, a, a wonderful story of redemption. A wonderful story about someone who loses their faith. And Jesus gently brings them back into the fold. It's a great story. I encourage you to read that story. And so what does Jesus do when he with them? He explains the scriptures to them. He says, now now that you're kind of settled a little bit, let me tell you how this all fits together. Okay? So he told them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, this is what is written. The Messiah would suffer and rise from the dead the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. So now Jesus is opening their heart, their minds. He's giving them understanding. And they're going, whoa, now, oh, we see it. And so now they're kind of putting the dots together. All right. So. This was Luke's account of the Easter story. Now, John wrote his story after Luke had already published his. And John added some some things that he remembered in there. And so uh, on John's account of Easter, he said, Jesus said unto them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, this really goes back to what um, Jesus said uh, after he said the model prayer. He says, if we forgive people their trespasses, then our sins will be forgiven. But if we don't forgive, 
our sins won't be forgiven. So of all the things that Jesus said, he only had a short time in between the resurrection and ascension. Of all the things he said, notice he talked about forgiveness. This, this is a key point of Christianity. Forgiveness is a, a key, key point of being a Jesus follower. He said, I have forgiven you of everything, so forgive people. That's, that's a key teaching of Jesus. So he explains the scriptures to them, and John adds what Jesus says in his account. And then two more things we want you to know about Easter, and that is the disciples rejoiced and they believed. It took a bit, but it would take a bit for us. Somebody coming back from the dead, and they saw Jesus. They saw, they heard, they felt and experienced. They, it convinced them that the resurrection really happened, that Jesus was alive in their midst. In fact, this same John we just read, when he wrote his um, book of 1 John, it starts out where John says, we have seen him, we've touched him, we have ate with him, we went on journeys with him, and we saw him after the resurrection. All of these things John is giving proof that says, I was there. I didn't just hear about this. I was there. I saw this happen. And what an undisputable proof it is from John, the scriptures, and also from history that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Now, what did he do before he dismissed them? Well, he gave them the Holy Spirit and authority. Remember when Jesus said, I, I am sending you out, okay, so send I you, he, he said. Now, of all of these things that we saw that happened on Easter Sunday morning, it was quite a day. <laughs> it, Jesus rose from the dead. He met and proved himself to no less than 16 people, including four women, at least, Ten apostles and two other disciples on the road. That, that's just the first day. He appeared in a room, walked through a wall. He demonstrated just one of the upgraded features of our resurrected body that, that we're going to be, able to, uh, to be able to do. He ate some fish, demonstrating that he really was um, not a ghost okay, he, or an apparition. So the resurrection changed everything. The whole world pivots. Whether they want to recognize Jesus or not, the whole world pivots on the resurrection. Why? Because we call it 2020. Because we measure everything from this man, Jesus. He split time and eternity. We call it 2020 because that's 2,020 years ago approximately was when Jesus lived. It changed everything. And Jesus changed our life and he changed our relationship with God. You see, without Jesus doing this, we were in a lost relationship with God because of our sin. And we can't be good enough or Jesus wouldn't have had to come. And so Jesus had to come and be that perfect sacrifice for our sins so that we could again have a relationship with God. What, what else does this mean? This means because the God of creation came down to his creation, his sinful creation, and he died for us, okay, and he rose for us. It means that we are not some evolutionary accident. We are not just evolving into whatever we're going to be. No, we are God's special creation. He intentionally created sons and daughters made in the image of God with all of God's love and hopes and dreams. In the image of God, he created us. We're special. We didn't evolve. We were created. And for his creation... He came down and lived and suffered 
and bled and died and rose again. Why? Because he didn't have anything to do? <laughs> no, because we're special. He loves us that much. See, Easter is a wonderful celebration of how your life can change. Many of you watching today know the changes that Easter has brought because you've asked Jesus into your heart. You have realized what it means to experience and know the resurrected Savior. You know that already. But maybe some of you who are watching from different parts of the United States or the world, you're just, you've tuned in, you found us, God has brought you here, and you're with us right now. I want you to know that God loves you with an everlasting love. There is nothing that you have gone through or will go through that God doesn't know about, and he wants to mend and heal and help you understand what a relationship with God is about. There is a cruelty in this world, and bad things happen to good people, to children, and, and we don't always understand why. But God is the God of, of healing, the God of restoration. He is the God that, that puts the pieces back together again. And if that describes your life, I want you to know that Jesus Christ, through his resurrection, put all the pieces back together. And he wants to have a relationship with you today because of Easter. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would encourage you to do that today. You say, how do I do that? Well, the Bible uses a lot of different words. It says pray. If you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Um, Jesus told Nicodemus, you have to be born again. He told the lady at the well, if you drink from this living water, you'll never thirst again. Jesus used a lot of metaphors for this. So what metaphor can we use today? How can, how can my life be put back together in a way that makes sense? You know, it's, it's called salvation, okay? And he won't just mend your, your needs. He changes your whole life, which is the greatest decision that you'll ever make. And so if you've never done that before, I want to encourage you to do that. And I just want to lead you in a prayer. And this no special, this is not a no special words about this. It's just your heart yearning for God, yearning for a relationship, needing your life to make sense. And it's just a prayer, something simply like this. If you've never prayed this prayer before, I'm just going to say a few words and, and just pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I know I've messed up. I know my life's a mess. And I believe that you came and died for me. And I believe that you rose for me. Jesus, I receive your forgiveness of sins in my life. I ask you to make me new today, to save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed a prayer, a sincere prayer to God, and that's what you wanted, you know what? The Bible says that God is living right in your heart through the Holy Spirit. And if you've done that today, we want to encourage you to drop us a line, maybe right on the chat section here on our Facebook, or you can go to, it's, here's all the information you need. It's just Sunrise Baptist at sunrisebaptist.org. That's all it is. You can Sunrise Baptist at sunrisebaptist.org. We're not going to pressure you to, to join or make a decision. We want to send you some literature that will help you on your journey in knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So we want to thank you uh, for sharing with us in this wonderful day, this day that we have uh, recognized as, as uh, the resurrection of Jesus. Watch this. Jesus Christ, Son of God, suffering servant, crucified Lord, obedient, loved, the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth, 
the glorified, resurrected Savior once for all time and eternity, ascended Savior, the living one, dead and is alive. You can trust him. He will save you. Your sins forgiven. And he is inviting you today to know him as your Lord and Savior. Easter changes everything. Receive him into your life and it will change your life forever. So thank you for sharing today and in um, being with us for this wonderful Easter celebra celebration. And we want to encourage you to uh, spend time with your family on Zoom or Facebook. If you can't be with them, uh, call them, think about your loved ones. Um, enjoy the time that we, we have and make the best of it. The Bible says redeem the time wisely. And so we will um, see you this week on Facebook. God bless you. Have a great, happy Easter.